since a lot of people get their news via YouTube and not necessarily on Facebook or Twitter or the other places that gets passed about, I thought I'd uh, read James Raggi's statement in regard to the, the Zach Smith kerfuffle and give a brief bit of opinion at the end. So here we go. Hello all, Jim here. Let's get this over with. Do note that I've been advised by legal counsel to not comment about the content of statements released by various parties involved in the current situation. Similarly, I have been advised by legal counsel that LOTFP is responsible for the comments left on our pages, so we all have to be heavy-handed moderating comments about this matter. There's a whole internet out there for you to express your unfiltered opinions. Please respect our situation concerning this matter in our spaces. Thank fucking Christ for lawyers, eh? And something I would have thought could go without saying, but I've been advised to go ahead and state. Lamentations of the Flame Princess publications are purely fiction. There are many things our books portray imaginatively that are absolutely unacceptable in reality, including all forms of violence, which also includes sexual harassment and assault. Keep the bad things in make-believe and the good in reality. And now on to the business at hand. 1. All of Zack Smith's upcoming work with LOTFP is cancelled. We are not destroying stock or erasing things that have already been published. There isn't anything on this earth that would make me a book burner. But should current stocks sell out, they will not be reprinted. Breaking this out and clarifying the grey areas. 2. Zack's financial interest is in Vornheim, Red and Pleasant Land, and Frostbitten and Mutilated. And that's it. He is not, and has never been, LOTFP management, and doesn't make decisions concerning books that he's not specifically credited on, and he doesn't have further financial involvement in the company beyond royalties from sales of just these three books. Zach had, some time ago, received considerable advances for two new books. One was in quite late stages of development and was planned to be released in April, and we'd been preparing another printing of Red and Pleasant Land, these, of course, are not moving forward. Zach's ref book contributions will also not be happening. I think that's all that was on his docket for us, but if I've missed mentioning anything here, they're still cancelled. 4. A new printing of Death Frost Doom that has a considerable amount of Zach's work is already at the printer, and there's not much to be done about that. At this point, I'm getting charged a near five-figure printing bill, whether they deliver the books or send them straight into the landfill, and I'm not sending them to the landfill. His work on this one was done and paid for in early 2014, and he does not receive any royalties from sales of this book. 5. Zach is credited as editor on Veins of the Earth, but the writing there is all Patrick. Zach's involvement in that project ended in 2015, and he was paid his fee at that time, and he does not receive any royalties from sales of this book. 6. We've got two full-time, including myself, employees, and one part-time employee who doesn't have another job, and investments in literally dozens of other zack free projects in various stages of completion. Many people are making royalties off of books that have nothing to do with Zack. Some people have already bailed from their upcoming projects, some might still, but I plan on fulfilling all my current obligations and continuing to release, for a long time to come, a lot of things that uphold the LOTFP standards of quality, intensity, and pure what the hell were they thinking. And now on a personal note. I've talked to a lot of people this past week, people with different perspectives, from the deeply affected to my printer representative who doesn't know anybody involved. People who had all sorts of opinions on the matter, some favouring one side, some favouring the other, people I agreed with and people I disagreed with. You know what they all had in common? They were bummed out. They recognised that this was a tragedy from top to bottom. Even the people who agreed with my course of action here, hell, even someone that thought I wasn't going far enough, recognised what we were losing, even while they said we needed to lose it. But there are other people out there, people who don't think that this is a tragic situation, there are people out there thrilled about how things have turned out. They're going to tell you that they were right all along about things, and they'll be most helpful suggesting all the things that still need to be done. You all need to keep your eyes out for these snakes slithering among us, feigning compassion 
when they once spat only cruelty, loving what this has done to us, ready to take advantage of the situation for themselves and to further erode all that we've collectively built as a creative community. Don't let them. And one last thing. I'd like to thank Zach for all the work and support over the years. I'm absolutely crushed that we cannot continue to collaborate. So just my two cents at the end, I guess. Um, there's nothing James could have said that would have made the slightest bit of difference to quite a lot of people. No matter what he said, they were going to react badly, and lo and behold, they're reacting badly. I think it's careful, measured, professional for the most part. Of course, the bit that's really set the cat amongst the pigeons is the last bit, but I think to call these people snakes is to miss a perfectly good opportunity to say that they're so two-faced they put Janus to shame. Um, because these are many of the same people who were horrendous to the girls who were part of Zack's group going, going back years. And it's only once this mantle of victimhood has, has fallen upon Mandy that they've switched sides, I guess. Um, I mean, it's good that Mandy's getting help. And I would say my position has shifted to belief um, because I trust Satine's judgment. Um, but I'm in no position to judge, and nor is anyone else, and nothing's proven. So I'm not going to do anything beyond what I already said I was going to do. So there's that. Uh, because I recognize that my own judgment is, is compromised and more people should probably do that. But still, I don't think there was anything wrong with that statement. I think it was accurate to call these kind of exploitative opportunists snakes. I would have called them something far worse and probably more florid and probably more suited to being a monster in one of the Lamentations gamebooks. But don't let that stop you being compassionate. Also, don't let any of this stop you speaking out for free artistic expression and supporting Jim and the rest of the people at LOTFP, because they deserve it. They've been a good, strident force for that free expression in games for some time, and that's why people hate them. And don't go thinking that <laughs> just because the accusations may have been right about Zack, that that means the role-playing community is utterly broken or in need of fundamental change or that anybody else they accuse of saying mean words to them online must therefore be guilty of something far more sinister. Keep your wits and your judgment about you. Zang. <laughs>